Afternoon, welcome to this meeting of St Helens Borough Council Cabinet. Item one is apologies for absence, none have been received. Two is declarations of interest from members. I've got an interest in item 11, non-pecuniary, so I'll be leaving the meeting at that part, at that point. Are there any other declarations of interest? Leader, it's Kath O'Dwyer, Chief Executive. I also have an interest um, in the part two item. Leader, it's Lisa Harris, Executive Director of PLACE. I also have an interest in the part two item. Thank you. Item three is the minutes of the meeting on the 24th of June. Are they agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you. And four is performance report out to 1920. Councillor Bond. Thanks, Chair. Uh, this performance out to report provides an analysis of performance across the council's portfolios at year end 2019 to 2020. The report's grouped by individual portfolios, with each portfolio section containing the key priorities. Summary of progress in terms of delivery against key priorities, a performance indicator tracking table showing performance against indicators in the year to date, the direction of travel and a comparative performance. A summary of progress against key performance indicators showing direction of travel and where required what is being done to improve performance. Now, the last report of this type came before Cabinet on the 27th of May. Uh, and that informed Cabinet that the COVID-19 pandemic has significantly impeded the Council's ability to set meaningful targets and review its measures of performance. Although the impact of COVID on outturn performance of 2019-20 was limited, the majority of indicators are now being impacted to varying degrees by the current situation. Colleagues can see where the performance in their own portfolio areas may require attention. I would encourage portfolio holders to concentrate on those areas as they tend to correlate with where budget pressures also arise. We should challenge ourselves and our officers in these areas to improve performance, particularly in light of some of the tough decisions we'll be making very shortly in terms of balancing this year's budget. Work is ongoing to ensure that future performance management arrangements are a part of the Council's reset and recovery activity. This work will involve a review of the draft Council plan incorporating reset and recovery activity within the associated action plan, as well as a revised performance framework with measures and targets reflecting the desired outcomes of the new plan. For this municipal year's performance reports, we're looking at further improvements to presentation to help with transparency and focus, as well as looking to present the reports based on priorities rather than portfolios, as there are some areas where there's a lot of crossover and complementary activities. So going forward, in terms of reporting, we're on an improvement journey with the performance management reporting process. There was significant progress made last year in terms of transparency and clarity of reporting. Uh, for this year, we intend to build on this and we'll be presenting the quarter one report based on our priorities. This, is, this will be vital in demonstrating how we are measuring how we are meeting our agreed priorities. We we'll review this when we consider this report in September, and this will be another significant improvement in transparency and organisational improvement. The revised performance framework will form the basis of future performance reporting to Cabinet over the course of this year. The recommendation, therefore, is to note the current performance position, work with appropriate executive directors to further address any deficits in current performance. So in putting forward the recommendation, I'd like to invite portfolio holders to comment on the respective areas. So I'll move the report, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bond. Are there any questions or comments? In that case, are the recommendations agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Item five is introduction of a mutually agreed resignation scheme. Councillor Grucott. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this report seeks Cabinet's approval to introduce a mutually agreed resignation scheme uh, as detailed in Appendix 1 of the Agenda Pack. Um, the MARS, as it's uh, snappily uh, 
acronymed, um, has been developed to offer an additional tool that can be used to help the council meet identified savings and offers a benefit to both the council and the employee. The MARS enables individual employees with permanent contracts of employment in agreement with the council to choose to leave their employment voluntarily in return for a discretionary severance payment, which is determined by length of service. This will be through a voluntary application process, which is non-contractual, but it has been discussed with the trade unions who were in agreement with us proceeding with it. This creates job vacancies that might be filled in a different way or by the redeployment of employees from other jobs or those seeking career development. I think for individuals choosing to apply, it might give a bit of help if they want to retrain, study or move. Um, and I think the COVID crisis has seen perhaps people uh, wanting to take um, different priorities and um, this gives us a way to have that conversation. It, applications will be considered on the basis of a business case which must identify savings sufficient to cover the costs and provide additional ongoing financial savings and ensure there's no interruption to services. Approval of Mars applications will be at the council's discretion and it isn't available in certain circumstances, for example, if someone's moving to another job or their team is under a current reorganisation. So on that basis, Chair, I welcome any comments or questions and ask Cabinet to approve the recommendations in the report. Thank you, Kate. Uh, any comments or questions from members? Are the recommendations and report agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you, everyone. Item six is business case for a mental health supported tenancy provision. Councillor Quinn. Thank you, Leader. Um, I'm delighted that this report has come to Cabinet today. Um, it's long overdue. Uh, we've been working on it for a number of years. And thankfully, our integration with our partners has delivered or hopefully will deliver what the proposal is. The proposal is that um, a place of residency for up to 16 mental health service users will be provided. The name is Cross Meadows, which is at Peasley Cross, directly adjacent to our mental health um, unit and day service provision. Um, we, are, we will be the only borough within Merseyside that has a self-purpose uh, building for this very vulnerable group. Um, it's proposed that there will be 14 um, one-bedroom apartments, separate entrances for females and males. There will be two crisis beds for people that may not need an overnight stay or a bit longer. Um, it would be manned 24 hours. Northwest Boroughs will be contributing to the mental health uh, cost. Local Authority and the CCG are meeting a capital charge of 60,000. And I'm very pleased to say that Taurus, our social housing provider, is providing 600,000 in the development and the, uh, you know, the modernisation of this scheme. It's a much needed scheme and we should be very proud um, that we are now meeting the need of a very vulnerable group that sadly has been neglected throughout the country by various governments and local authorities have had to manage the best way they can. Being located where it is, it's hoped and the business case says it will, hopefully it does, it will uh, free up more bed space in the hospital across the road. So that would be a savings for us. Um, it will give untold benefits to our service users, uh, building independence, being confident, um, all those things. It will be for a maximum of a two year period for those 14 individuals, because the issue we have with a lot of um, mental health uh, service provision is housing is that they get settled. And that is not 
integrating them into the community. So I think Cabinet should be extremely proud of what uh, the proposal is today. And I think we should shout loud and clear that this is a result of our integration. So um, if members have any questions, I will try to answer them. I'm not sure whether the two officers have been able to log in, Sarah and Rachel, because they did have IT problems, but I will do my best. Thank you. Thanks, Marlene. Thanks, Councillor Quinn. Are there any questions or comments? Is that agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Good work, Councillor Quinn and officers involved. Well done. Well, I, it's not a partnership. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Item seven, new educational premises for Asher's Primary School. Councillor Murphy. Thank you, Leader. Cabinet will remember that in September last year, approval was given for a new build to replace the existing Asher School. The main reasons for this were firstly, the unsuitability of the current provision and secondly, the extremely poor state of repair. In reaching the decision, a total of 6.2 million was approved to subject to further detail work being undertaken. Additional surveys have been taken by Kia North West Limited over the last six months. And this, along with a revised cost review, coupled with the design changes to address the COVID-19 challenges, have consequently increased the estimated costs to 7.2 million. Copies of the sketches of the new school are attached to the body of the Cabinet report. The report recommends that work should continue and the additional costs of 1.5 million are approved. The increased costs will be met from the basic need funding that is currently unallocated in the Children's Service Capital Programme. If agreed, this will provide a much needed facility for these children. And they have been really working in appalling conditions and I know they will be welcomed by the staff, the head teacher and the community. So I commend these recommendations for your approval and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Leader. Thanks, Councillor Murphy. Any questions or comments from members? Is that agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you. It is excellent news for pupils in the Ashurst uh, School community. Well done. OK, item number eight is supported lodgings. Councillor Charlton. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'm sure you've all read the paper before you on supported lodgings. Um, and today I'd like ask, to ask Cabinet to approve the expansion of the existing supported lodgings provision that we have for young people leaving care and that the existing contract for the provision is revised and expanded to reflect the new arrangements. So in turn, this will enable us to provide more placements for our young people that we care for um, and offer a tiered approach so that young people who have different levels of need will be able to be supported accordingly. Um, I just wanted to highlight some important things out of the report in front of you because I think it's, it's quite important. Um, supported lodgings, uh, firstly, are extremely cost effective. But more importantly, they enable positive outcomes for young people making that transition to um, independent living. So if we look at those young people moving into um, further education, employment and training, the outcomes of those young people that are in supported lodgings are much better um, than the counterparts. You know, so you look at some of the, the outcome indicators, there's a high, higher percentage of those living in supported lodgings that achieve positive um, outcomes. And I think that's really important because we get, we're preparing our young people and we're giving them better life chances. Um, and then also, it, in terms of the paper, it highlights that um, we need to make additional investment um, for local provision, but ultimately we will get a return on savings um, because it will reduce the number of young people being placed 
in alt alternative, more expensive settings. But again, the most important thing is we'll be improving outcomes for our young people that we look after. Um, you know, think you, we need to take that away with us. So I'd just like to ask Cabinet to approve the recommendations in the report. And if anybody has any questions. Thank you, Councillor Charlton. Are there any questions or comments from members? Can't get me handled. Councillor Quinn. Yeah, um, fully agree with what Councillor Charlton's just said. And I think it's an excellent idea for our young people to give them uh, a sense of feeling of being in a home setting and learning. Councillor like... Quinn, do you want to put the camera on? Sorry. Uh, Sorry about camera? that. Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, fully agree with what Councillor Charlton said and what the report out, outlines. Um, it is um, another step in the right direction for these young people and giving them another life chance. Um, yeah. a, a very few for uh, children that come into care. I, I'd just like to ask Councillor Charlton, we do a lot of advertising um, for foster parents. How are we going to promote this more for that older uh, child needing supported lodgings? Is there anything uh, in the pipeline um, advertising it more to engage with more people out there? Th thank, thanks, Councillor Quinn. Um, in terms of the of how we promote this, we're obviously we've got um, a, we're, we're going to look at an organisation to deliver this for us, and as part of their strategy, they will they will um, have a way of promoting it. I suppose internally, we we will continue to promote things as we do in terms of the foster care on pay slips um, and with out to members. I'm not sure of any other strategies that we might have in terms of delivering it. I don't know whether um, Jim can help me out on that one. Uh, Lena, uh, this is a contract that we will be taking on uh, with an organisation called CHAP, which is a local charity. They will be responsible for the recruitment uh, of supported lodgings and people who would be interested in doing that. There's a whole raft of things that they would get engaged with, so that would be advertising, uh, both uh, using our own internal systems and also using the local media. What we're looking for essentially is a family environment for young people over the age of 16 to well, ultimately in their 20s to actually be given an opportunity yeah. of family life in a stable set of circumstances. We're very clear that that has to be uh, very carefully vetted and approved. This is about, um, as, Councillor, as Councillor Quinn said, it's about giving kids a, a, a good, good life chance. And that level of recruitment um, and the initiatives that we put into place to do that, uh, we would look to SHAP to lead. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Any further questions or comments for Councillor Charlton? Yeah, Chair. Sure. Councillor McCauley. Yeah. Thanks. Thank, thanks, Chair. Uh, uh, first of all, I think it, I think it's wonderful uh, what we're doing. Here. I know it's been something Councillor Charlton has been pushing uh, since she came into position, and I just want to congratulate her on the work she's done with Jim to get this to get this to where we are today don't they? we all know where the where the uh, our budget pressures are within children's services and this will help that immensely but better than that as council charlton said it's what it's doing for those for those young people so i i, I applaud and i fully support this and i applaud councillor charlton and jim for, for bringing this to us thanks councillor mccauley any further questions or comments Okay, I just want to say just before I ask for agreement, which I presume will be forthcoming, um, the council does many important things and um, it's hard to argue there's anything more important than looking after our young people and our children and giving them the, make sure they get the best possible start in life. Um, and that's all children, regardless of their background. And I think the previous item on Asher's primary school and this item on supported lodging show that we're taking that seriously. And it's great to bring two papers like that to cabinet today for approval. So item eight on supported lodgings, is that agreed? Agreed. 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 Agreed.
Thank you, everyone. Item nine is exclusion of the public for restricted business. Is that agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Agreed.